In the past few years, we have used, tested and analyzed quite a few OEM recommended engine oils where you guys have repeatedly requested to do a lab test analysis on the Liquid Gun 15W50 grade engine oil from Royal Enfield. This is one of those oils which gets mixed reviews from the riding community where I was told along with the engines, Royal Enfield has improved the formulation in the last couple of years or so. One look at the old spec sheet revealed that this isn't the best oil for your Enfield. So I decided to go ahead and get the fresh, out of the bottle sample lab tested, which revealed something which was unexpected. So before we jump into the lab test analysis, I found that apart from the 650 twins, now triplets, which runs on 10W50 grade oil, Ari is using this 15W50 grade liquid gun in the rest of the fleet. So everything right from the classic Meteor to Hunter is recommended to run on this liquid gun. The new J-series engines now take around 1.7 litre for regular oil change, unlike the older UC motor with 2.5 litre some size. Although the liquid gun is labelled and owned by Royal Enfield, you will get to see it getting manufactured by other prominent brands like HPCL, Total, Tidewater and other vendors. In this case, you will find some Enfield mechanics preferring Tidewater and HPCL manufactured products, but in reality, you can expect them to have a similar additive package which was pre-decided by Enfield. We will start this fresh engine oil analysis with viscosity, which is usually defined as resistance offered by a fluid to flow. At 40 degrees Celsius, our new sample of liquid gun stood at around 135.8 mm2 per second, which is comparable to most 15W50 grade oils. In fact, it seems a bit less than some brands that offers up to 150 mm2 per second. Now coming to the kinematic viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius, the previous data sheet quoted a variable of 18.5 to 19.5 mm2 per second, where in our test we got 18.24 mm2 per second, which is alright and should not be a reason for concern. This directly leads us to the viscosity index, which represents how stable the oil performs in terms of viscosity when it comes to change in temperature. The old data sheet shows viscosity index of 125, which is nothing that can be highlighted about as there is a good scope for improvement, which is represented in our new sample with a viscosity index of 150, which is really good for a 15W50 grade engine oil. Next, we have TBN, that is total base number, which represents the engine oil's capacity to protect the engine by neutralizing the acidic environment inside the engine. We have a TBN of 6 from our previous data, while our latest lab test results came up with a TBN of 7.58, which is an improvement in the right direction. Do note that this is also a part which will help in claiming long drain interval. The flashpoint also showed an improvement from the mentioned 200 degrees Celsius to our latest tested 230 degrees Celsius, which is again a big jump right in the direction of other premium offerings. Coming to the other part of the analysis, we will begin with the contaminants. Well, we didn't find much apart from silicon, which was present with 5.6 parts per million, which can be a part of anti-foaming agent or just showing some traces of the mineral base oil. This brings us to the additive element analysis, which has got some unexpected results for us in store. We will start this with the calcium and magnesium that forms the detergents and dispersant package. Calcium breaks the record with 2224.5 parts per million, which is just excellent. We don't have much to mention about magnesium at 9.3 parts per million, where I felt the calcium and magnesium balance could have improved from the magnesium end, just like we have seen with many BS6 engine oils in the past. Moving ahead to wear and tear along with corrosion protection, we have zinc and boron, where Ari has been generous with zinc at 1038.3 parts per million, which should be appreciated. On the other hand, boron is hardly traceable at 12.4 parts per million. Next, we have extreme pressure additive in the form of phosphorus that helps the engine oil to perform under heavy load and high temperature conditions. At 951.6 parts per million, phosphorus exceeded our expectations, which is a good news for the users. And the good news does not end there, as we also get molybdenum at 113.7 parts per million, which acts as a friction modifier to reduce friction in between moving parts. I'm sure a lot of us did not expect the additive package to be this wholesome, which must have exceeded the expectations of many. So what's the real catch over here? Well, this is a dated API SL semi-synthetic engine oil that is primarily derived from a group 2 and group 3 category base oil, which isn't bad, but then there are better base oils that can boost and sustain the performance of the engine oil. But going by the long stroke low revving demand from the engine, the formulation looks alright, especially when you have to meet the low cost of maintenance demand. 
Technically speaking, this is just the first part of the practical case study where the actual performance will come into the picture when we drain the soil after using it under different riding conditions and that used oil goes for a lab test where we can do a depth analysis. Do let me know if you guys are interested in the same as these videos get really expensive on the pocket. So that's it for this video and I hope you guys have liked it.